Hello and welcome to KnowledgeBank.pro. Today we will talk about how to improve and supercharge your KPIs by using rankings. Let's talk a little bit about the data set. In our case, it's a sales data set where we're tracking our sales by product, salesperson, by date, and we have a sales amount. Here on the left we have two slicers. At the bottom of the slicer we can select a year, week, so we can pick any arbitrary week and then for that week, we, we are going to compare the last n number of weeks. So we might be looking at last four weeks, we might be looking at last eight weeks, or we might be looking at last 16 weeks of data. So here in this table, I have broken down my products and their sales in a selected time period relative to the selected weeks. So here I also ordered it by sales in the ascending order. So we can see that uh, product A sold $5,300 and so forth. Uh, by looking at this table, would we call this a good KPI? I would say no, because a good KPI would have to have, in my mind, at least three characteristics to be valid. Number one is we need to know what the value is. In our case, we're showing the value, so that requirement is met. Number two is for a KPI, we would like to know what the desired value should be. And by looking at this, and how do we know whether this value is good or bad relative to the desired value? That desired value could be budget, forecast, or in our case, it would be the prior period. So if we're looking at last eight weeks, then we do another eight weeks before that, that would be the period that we would be comparing ourselves to. So in our case, I do know what the value is, but I don't, I don't know how well it performed relative to the target and our target is the prior period. So what I would need to do to make it a better KPI is to add some sort of color indicator. Here you go. Now this is looking a little bit better. So now as I'm looking at my uh, product sales, I'm able to see that some of them are red, some of them are green. Red means that my last eight weeks in our case of sales uh, for the current period are worse than last eight weeks, the prior period and so forth. So this is a little bit of a better KPI because I'm able to see the current value and how the KPI uh, has performed relative to the target. In one of my prior videos, I talked about how you can make the KPI even better by adding a trend indicator. By the way, this video and uh, is a tutorial as well, which means that you could look for the link to the model in the description of the video, where you can download the model, take a look at all of the calculations and the data. So in one of the prior videos, I talked about how to add a trend and here for product E, we know that the sales are 13K, it's in red, so it's doing worse this period versus the prior period, but the sales are trending up. So at least um, I'm in red, but trending up, it's much better to be in red and trend up than be in red and trend down. The next question is, now that we know the value, the target and the trend, can we add a ranking information to make our KPI even more meaningful? And I would argue that by just adding a rank of um, how the this particular product is ranking in the product portfolio for this week is pretty meaningless, right? So here I ranked my products one through five. I could have gotten the same visual insight by just ordering my products by sales. So in and of itself, ranking is not, I would argue, a very uh, meaningful uh, addition to the KPI insight. How can we make ranking more meaningful, you ask? Well, one way to do this is to add a change in rank. So look at this information here. Today, in this period, rather last eight weeks, relative to our week uh, 2020, 20, 31, product D is ranked number one. So that's good. Uh, but we also know that it gained three uh, positions in the rank. So uh, right now it's rank one. It used to be in prior period, it was probably, well, it's, it was uh, ranked at, at product number four. So now we added yet another layer of insight to this number. So we have 23K current value. It's doing better this week than it did last week. Trends, trend is a little bit down, so could have been better. So up trend would be better than down trend. So we're, but we're still doing pretty well. It's ranked one, so it's the highest uh, product uh, this period. And it leapfrogged another two products to get to that level. So uh, by us looking at the rank change, this could be a, another very valuable piece of insight for putting things in perspective. So ranking by itself is not very helpful. Ranking change uh, can be very helpful. Can we add another ranking characteristic to this 
to this table to give us a little bit even more insight. Uh, turns out that you can. So here I've added one more column and the column say, says rank in the prior period. What does that mean? So if my sales of 23,000, if I were to use them in the sales distribution from the prior period, how would that rank? So in this period, 23,000 ranks as number one. But in the prior period, 23,000 would have landed at number two spot. So how else can you interpret it? Well, 23K is good. It's uh, that performance for product D is really good. We jumped a few, st few spots in our rankings. We're at the very top. But last period, there was a product that performed even better. So it's just yet another piece of information that helps us understand current period distribution, last period distribution, and kind of what's going on, what kind of dynamic do we have going on uh, with our sales over the selected period. Now let's take a look at the decks that I used to implement all those calculation. And the, at the end, we will uh, just slice and dice our report and see if we can use the insight in our table in conjunction with other charts on this report to glean some interesting insight and how we might use it for our analysis. So the first calculation allows us to get the rank of the selected period. We're using the rank X function. The way the function works is we're going to make a list of all products. Don't forget, you always want to use all uh, in our case, because otherwise you're only going to be able to see the selected product in the table. So we make a list of all unique values in our product dimension. We're going to create a calculate sale for each product. Then we're going to take the current sale and see how it ranks given the, uh, the sales distribution by product. And then what we want to do is uh, only if we have one product selected, we want to return the ranking. Obviously, if we have more than one product selected, then the ranking would not make sense. Now let's talk about how we can calculate the rank change. Rank change is also very, fairly easy. First thing, we're going to create a variable in which we're going to calculate the rank for the current period. And that will still use the rank X function. And in our measures, we're going to be using last n weeks of sales. Then we're going to calculate a variable that's going to calculate the ranking for the prior period. So the DEX will be almost identical. The only thing will change is we have a list of our products. We're just going to use the sales for the prior period, both to create the sales distribution and then uh, the current value. So now that we have one and the other, we could just uh, deduct um, the, uh, this period rank from the prior period rank. That will give us the change in rankings. The fun one is to calculate the ranking of the current sales in the prior fee period distribution. The way we do that is we still start out with the rank X function for all of our products. Then we calculate what the sales were in the prior period. And then we use the current period sales to see how that stacks up versus the prior period. And again, we're going to check whether we only have one product selected and return that ranking back. I'm not going to cover not rank specific calculations in this model, but I did have to create calculation for sales in this period, calculation for sales in the prior period. We do have these complications with uh, having the flexibility to select the current week and the range. So uh, I um, advise you to go ahead and download the model, take a look at DEX. If you're trying to figure out how that works, uh, you will glean some interesting DEX uh, techniques from looking at those calculations. So now I'm going to just spend a little bit of time by slicing and dicing on our report and see if we can uh, substantiate some of the insight that this table um, transmits to us. So uh, according to this uh, table here, we know that product D is pretty interesting. The rank went up by three. It's one number one. It's trending down. And uh, in the prior period, it, it only would have been ranked at number two. So let's see if this makes sense. So I'm going to click on D. And right away, I see that, yes, indeed, this period, uh, which is uh, red line here, is much better than the prior period. You could just visually see that this makes complete sense. It says the trend is down. If I were to run a trend line through the last uh, eight points, it would be downward pointing. So that makes sense. It says that it's ranked number one. I could look at this chart here. And uh, this chart I sorted by last, uh, uh, by the current period sales, and you could see that D is the highest. But in the prior period, we could see that it was much lower, so it went up by quite a bit this, uh, this period. And, uh, but however, product E was, would have, was still much higher prior week, the blue bar. So even though product D is really good um, for the current period, 
in the prior period, product E was a super champion and was much higher than this. So this substantiates the claim that would have been ranked at second in the prior period. In our case, we only have five products. So uh, the charts I've selected for this report make it pretty obvious uh, as we slice and dice to understand what happened and um, uh, what was desirable and undesirable. Imagine if you had 100 products or 1,000 different products, and that would be the case where having all of this different ranking, not necessarily the pure ranking, I, as I said before, it's uh, pretty useless, but rank change and rank in prior period, they'd add pretty interesting insight and it would make it more intuitive for us to to find the, uh, the data point here that would be interesting to click on to understand what's going on, why is it so high up, why is it trending down, um, why is it ranked so low or high or why did the rank change by so much? That's about it for today. Uh, go ahead and download uh, this model from the blog site. Uh, the link will be in the description of this video. Thank you for stopping by and I'm looking forward to see you come back very soon for the next one. Thanks. Bye.